Like I had the pleasure of actually like knowing my brother. You know what I'm saying? I had the pleasure of actually knowing him, actually getting to know him. You know, I knew the darkest things about him. I knew the best things about him. Like we had a, a genuine, you know, loving relationship. Any picture that he'll take on his phone before he post, he'll send it to me, ask me which, you know what I'm saying, which one did I like the most and things like that. So I literally got like memories, you know what I'm saying, of, of my brother that I can kind of go through and I can see him smiling, you know what I'm saying? I can see him laughing. I can see, uh, like I said, just like, it's just, it's constant, you know what I'm saying? I can feel his presence because you know, I know what it felt like to have my brother. Uh, it's a lot of people that, that don't have that relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that don't have that relationship with loved ones. Uh, it's a lot of people that say they love you to their family members and don't actually have a relationship with them just because, you know, you think that's what you're supposed to do because you're family. And, you know what I'm saying? I was really blessed to, for 19, 20 years to actually have a genuine, a loving relationship with my brother and be able to remember those good times. Zach is a loving, uh, Always got a smile on his face. Always goofy. Uh, proud of who he is since we were babies. You know what I'm saying? Like he's just he's different, and he loved it. You know what I'm saying? He just like if me and Kai were saying we were gonna do something, and Zach didn't want to do it, like he was gonna be the first one to tell you, like, no, that's not my thing. I don't I don't like that. And you know, a lot of people you would think that. Uh, you know, if your brother's gonna do it, then of course I'm gonna do it. Just because that's my brother's and Zach was his own person. And he, he embraced that. And it took me a while, like I had to like grow and mature to that point where he was already at. And like our relationship kind of grew once I started to understand him, actually get to know him. And that probably happened around like high school, uh, high school time. I kind of like, you just learn more about him, learn like, who he is as a person. Uh, he was willing to give his last, uh, he's always there to put a smile on somebody's face. Uh, man, it's just you wish you wish you could be more like him in in a, in a lot of ways. Why now? Uh, I think I'm finally getting to that point where I can. Like you can you can talk about him and not like destroy your whole like world over again. Uh, you can talk about him, and you can think about the positive times. You can think about you had time to actually sit and think about what he was in your life, and if you weigh it, like he's done a lot more good for me than bad. Uh, I can't like I said I don't hate him. You know what I'm saying? I love him with everything in me. Uh, and when I see him again, it's probably the only thing we're gonna fight about, you know what I'm saying? That he made me, you know, adjust to a life without him. That's the only, that's the only problem that I can have with him at any point, and we will handle that when I, when I see him again. But other than that, uh, he brought a smile to my face. He brought happiness in my world. Uh, he picked me up when I was down. He, you know, keep me, he gave me motivated when, you know what I'm saying? There's times I thought this wasn't for me. There's times I thought that I couldn't accomplish certain things. And then I look at him, or I look at my brothers, and those are my biggest supporters. Those are my, you know what I'm saying, my biggest cheerleaders. And they still support me. They still think I got it. So in my head, I think I got it too, because that's all I need right there. So they've done so much good for me, so many great things. He's done so much good for me, so many great things that, you know, I can't, I can't let his name be forgotten. It's the Michigan State University Spartans and the Rutgers University Scarlet Knights today. Rutgers really hold their home court advantage up high over the last three years. They're 34 and six in this building. It doesn't matter if it's the men or the women hosting. One and 21, the road teams here against Rutgers on this floor. It's a huge opportunity for Michigan State. Spartans looking for a third straight. Scarlet Knights in search of number five in a row. Just one loss here in this building. Here's Clouden deep in the shot clock. Got some space, got fouled. Her last bucket and one against Ohio State and her first one today. 
Puppies back inside the palace. Great control with the left hand. Montez hasn't had a shot yet here in the early going. That's a tough runner in the lane. McCutcheon pulls up for the triple. What a shot. Taryn McCutcheon. Jenner watches the triple. Was back and forth early, but Michigan State with a six-point lead on the road. Out and got space baseline. Five and a half to play in the second. Joiner, a left corner three. Bring it up. Comes left around the screen to the free throw line. Drives inside. Got blocked. Oh, Caleb Bell is a big swap. Keep working together. Cloudon crosses over, turning down a screen. Sends it into the corner. Joiner for three. Got it. Mo Joiner, her third three in the first half. Sanders 0 for six. Back to Wallace with intensity. Bellis didn't give up any ground. Down to five on the shot clock with Clouded. Baseline finds Joiner open for three. She beat the buzzer for her fourth triple of the ball game. Crowd back in it, down to a five point game. Back to McCutcheon for the silencer off the glass. What a drive by Clouded. That's a tough shot. The way that she's able to elevate over the defense. Inside her <laughs> joiner. See, that was patience. Now, Michigan State's responses tonight have been impressive. Every time Rutgers pulls within a possession, they have found a way to pull back in front. Cutchin. Bobs over to Cook on the right wing. Puts up a three. In and out, offensive board, Bellis back up, lays it in to tie it up. Seven points, ten rebounds for the sophomore. McCutcheon, open court to Joyner, leaves it for Clouded for the lead, and Michigan State back in front. Rutgers came back to tie this game, and Michigan State has taken the lead, and Nia Clouden puts him back up by two possessions. On the freshman, Joyner to the rim, good defense. Takes it to the right block, gets underneath the cup, kicks to the corner. Joiner, catch and shoot three. Book it. Mo Joiner, red hot from downtown. That's a new career high for the freshman who has 17. Crosses over to her right, gets to the right block, fires a pass inside, and Joiner lays it in. Cloud the assist. Joiner with 19 points. The second chance opportunities, all of it, all those little things create. Wins at big moments. Rutgers calls it off, and Michigan State's gonna leave the rack with a huge road win. And, and that's a big one, and a rare loss for Rutgers at home. And to beat a top three team in the Big Ten is really important. A team that is in the middle of the pack trying to gain that confidence. But an excellent performance from them. A 66-55 win for the Spartans on the road at Rutgers. Though my brother is gone, nobody in my family has uh, guilt, you know? Nobody in my family has guilt, you know? You feel like you could have done more, like, done more in terms of, like, actions, like, done more, like, maybe moved them out, maybe uh, moved somebody there, you know what I'm saying? Actions, but not in terms of, like, emotional guilt. Like, you didn't show him that you loved him. You didn't show him that you cared for him. Uh, and that makes it not easier, but, but bearable. That you're not, like, in a, a tragedy like this, you know, on your heart, you're gonna feel like, I could have done more, but it's gonna hurt more if you feel like I didn't show him how much I really loved him, you know? And now he's gone and I can't show him how much I actually loved him, you know? I think in my family, we had to, like, we had to bless opportunity for him to, like we show, like Smoothie knows how much each and every one of us loved him and cared for him and would do anything for him, you know. So in a situation that it comes up, if you show them that they, that you love for them and you care for them and that things will get better uh, and take the right steps, you know, when you see something I could see a sign early, I would say, like, go nip it in the bud. Go nip it in the bud, but don't, don't exaggerate it. Like, don't, don't, don't push it. Don't, like, don't get to making it about you. 
you know what I'm saying, of person. Like the first thing when somebody says they wanna they wanna kill themselves, people initially say, How could you do this to me? Like you you know how much you mean to me, 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 me. Where it's not about you. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, if that person kills himself, like it's gonna hurt you, but he's gone. You know, he's gone. It's about them. And if the situation does come, and I hope it doesn't, but if it does, make sure that it becomes about them, how you can help them, how you can better their situations, how much you love them, how much you care for them, how much love is in their life. Because in his head, he he couldn't, uh, it wasn't outside love, it was love within himself that he couldn't figure out, that he, that he was fighting. Uh, it's, it's, he, was, he was finding it hard, finding his worth. Not what people see his worth is, what he sees his own worth as. And that's what I think uh, it should be the best approach is, you know, you gotta put all your energy into that person. And when, sign, when it does get better, you don't give up. Like you don't just, it doesn't go away like that. Like this is something that, like when you, when it first happens, you're gonna put all your energy and you're gonna feel like, okay, we're, we're on top of it, okay, we're making things happen. And then you kinda like relax a little bit because you feel comfortable. You feel like we, we got it and you can't do that. You kinda gotta, you gotta pour all, like every ounce of your love, every ounce of your love into that person because it's gonna be draining. It could be hard too, but it's so much better with them there than with them without it. Like, don't be selfish with it. Don't be, like, looking out for you. Don't tell them how much it's gonna hurt you. Like, it's not about you. This is, this is, this, this is bigger than you. This is bigger than you. This is something that you gotta pour your all into that person because that person needs help. And they're searching for help from within their self. And you gotta figure out a way to kind of bring that from within themselves. I won't be the last in this situation, uh, as sad as it is. Uh, it might be people who went through way worse than me, as sad as that is. Uh, but if I can help, like, just give a little light, give a little uh, hope that, you know, it, it's terrible, but it, it isn't, like, isn't the end, if that makes sense. It's not the end. It's not, uh, you can still be a good person. You can still make a difference. You can still find a way to move forward and keep moving and just use it, you know what I'm saying? Just use that hurt. It's gonna be pain. It's gonna be days where you can't do it. It's gonna be days where uh, tears come down your eyes. It's gonna be days where you're having the best moment of your life and it just crashes because a tragedy happened, a, part, a piece of your heart is missing, and that's okay. That's okay. You don't have to feel bad about it. You don't have to try to hide it. You don't have to uh, try to push it down anywhere. You can feel it. You can embrace it. Because if you do that, that means you had a relationship that you lost something you cared about. Uh, and if you don't do that, maybe you didn't care. But if you are, you're gonna feel those emotions. You're gonna feel that pain. You just can't get stuck. Because when you get stuck, that's when the days pile on you. That's when you stop eating. That's when you bring harm to yourself. And if you're moving, then at least you got a chance. And I feel like I found a way to keep moving. And I take step backwards all the time. Uh, it's days where I don't feel like doing anything. It's days where I can't do anything, but I force it. I move and it's days where I make up for it. And I, I, I can see like the light. I can see happiness. I can feel joy. And it's gonna be people in my situation again. And hopefully this helps them out that it might not be the blueprint because everybody's different, but there is a chance. Uh, there is a chance that you can still find joy, still find happiness in everyday things. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Mon Ice Arena on the campus of Michigan State University. 
Michigan State taking on number nine ranked Penn State in a battle for second place and possibly the league lead in the Big Ten Hockey Conference here this evening. When you look at Big Ten play, Michigan State 8-5-1, Penn State 8-5-1. The two teams met in early November, each team with a win. Rob, this is shaping up to be a whale of a weekend. This is a great opportunity for us to take that step as far as getting into the NCAA tournament, let alone start climbing back up into that first spot in the Big Ten. And we are underway here at Mon Ice Arena. The cross ice pass for Sternshine got past him, and here we go back into the zone. Cordorenko yes! shot goal for Michigan State. Patrick Cordorenko took the quick pass from the far boards by Gino Estevez and roofed it. Patrick Cordorenko's career goal number 5-0. That is a highlight that he will enjoy watching as the years go by. So over the blue line, drops it back to Evan Barrett. Pocket pick by Sasama. Finds Cordorenko uh, by himself, coming in, down the middle. Yes! Shot, goal for Michigan State. Patrick Cordorenko, so nice, he did it twice. 2-0 Spartans. 12-28 <laughs> to go in the third period. Putting the pressure on, getting some good looks, good shots on net. Cole Krieger, yeah! shot, goal! Cole Krieger off of the faceoff, took a pass at the top of the left circle and didn't wait. He buried it, 3-1 Michigan State. Talk about good looks and good shots on net. Great patience, Scott. Cross ice to Rosberg, steps down to the circle, now back up to the high slot, back to Rosberg. Over to Kordorenko, top to left circle, hat trick for Patrick. <laughs> Third goal of the night for Kordorenko, make it 4-1 Spartans. How about that, Scott? The fans, they know it, couple hats. Hey, let's add some more, getting tossed out onto the ice. And this one goes into the win column for the Spartans. The final score, Michigan State four, Penn State two. Same two teams. Tomorrow night with the season series on the line and possibly second place in the Big Ten. And a pleasant good afternoon to everybody and welcome to the barn. Williams Arena, one of the classic venues of all of college basketball. And the Gophers have a really good basketball team even though MSU had a pretty solid performance in East Lansing 17 days ago against them, winning that one 74 to 58. They get to come home now and have for them what might be a revenge game after not looking good in East Lansing. I agree this Gopher team could be very, very dangerous. Michigan State has to play better than they did in Bloomington, otherwise this road trip will be a bad one at 0-2. On the break, Malik Hall gets a pass from Cash, plays it up, and it's in, and that's your first two of the game. The Spartans the other way. Watts is a rocket as he motored down the floor to Henry, and he uses the glass. Long shot, long rebound, no one puts a body. Can they capitalize right here? That's on his spot. Yeah. On his own. <laughs> Henry with a pilfer. End to end, and that's vintage Michigan State. 16 to nine, our score. Over 12 minutes gone in the opening halves. Mm, great rebounding on the offensive boards by Hall. Out to Winston for three. And Patino needs a timeout. Michigan State, one thing you want to do is get the crowd out a bit early. That's how you come into a hostile environment and take control of the first half. Mm. Tillman off a beautiful time drop by Henry. Keeping it alive, Winston will pop it again. Count it, and a foul on Carr. Brown, beautiful cut and feed. And it's paid dividends by kicking it out to the corner to Kane Brown for a knockdown three. Gabe Brown, seven points, all this half, 44-33 our score. Outside to Henry, nothing but nylon. Trey Williams was late getting over defensively. 49 to 36, the lead balloons to 13 is the largest equal from the first half. Great ball movement onto the wing, Watts rattles it home. Tim, do the good teams just know how to respond? Do they ever? 
Well, they hold Minnesota under 30% from the floor, Jim. 70 to 52, our final score.